So we're in uh, Salisbury city centre at the moment and uh, we've just tried to get into shoe zone. Um, we couldn't get in shoe zone it's because... Yeah, it took us a good 45 minutes to get in because some pillar had parked his car in the way. So not only could we get, couldn't get in, people with push chairs couldn't get in. Probably more important is people with push chairs who were in the shop couldn't get out. So if there was a fire or something, it would have been a nightmare. Um, we approached him and asked him to move nicely to start off with. Um, he refused. Well, if he, he told me to wait um, as he was packing up his stall. And then I said, can you just move it slightly down because I just need to get into the shop. And then he told me to try and get through. So I tried to get through, uh, demonstrated that the width was not wide enough. He then said, if you do my car in, I'll get you. And then... I felt quite threatened by that and then refused to move his car until he packed up all of his things because apparently his, his packages were heavy. Yeah, so uh, so he didn't do his manual handling assessment. Not um, at all. He didn't do his risk assessment and I can entirely, I, I can assure you that Salisbury Council hasn't done a very good fire assessment, risk assessment if they're letting people load up there. Well, and the difference today is the scaffolding. Um, if the scaffolding's there, surely he should have taken that into account and adjusted his uh, plans accordingly so Especially people could get through it. loading bay not five metres down the road from him that he yeah. could have parked up in. Yeah. There's actually a bit near the Portrue Cross outside Starbucks where he could have parked and it would have been absolutely fine. And we were joined by another lady in a wheelchair. Sue Harrison, lovely lady, used to be a nurse. Yeah, absolutely and fantastic woman who has struggled as well and could entirely see my point and has been speaking to me about how difficult it is as a disabled person in Salisbury getting basic access or even being treated like a basic person and yep. I can't help but agree with her today because he dismissed me and said that it wasn't his problem like I was just not important enough yeah um, I mean as it is Salisbury only about 40% of the shops are actually accessible anyway mm -hmm. um, same goes for the cafes most of the cafes that are accessible happen to be chains which force you to eat junk food. A lot of the I nice cafes. I support cafes. my local economy. I, I like to buy in the market if I possibly can, because it's uh, I, I get on with a lot of the market storeholders, but I also like to support my local businesses and community. However, attitudes like that, I feel, don't really foster the kind of nurturing relationship that you want in a community. Surely the whole point of having a local stall and having a market stall is being part of a community. Part of that community is surely including everybody in that community, not just the people you deem to be important. Cool. Not That's only that, but it's very disappointing that when the Salisbury Council person came, rather than trying to sort out the issue, he was way more concerned that we were recording the incident, and the only reason we were recording was because I wanted to come raise a complaint. When I asked him if I could raise a complaint, he just merely directed me to, and I quote, Salisbury City Council, like, that's helpful. So, how's it made you feel? Well, it's uh, triggered off my PTSD symptoms, as you can probably see. I felt incredibly threatened. I felt incredibly demeaned and I didn't even feel like a proper person. I felt like I was completely devalued as a person. Not only that, but I think he treated me with total lack of respect that you'd basically hope to have with a basic person. I treat people better in the street if they were rude to me than he did to me. And you were treated entirely like that because you're in a wheelchair. That's the only reason. We also had a witness with us, Sam. Sam, what are you writing to it all? Huh? What do you what think? Do you the whole what do you reckon to the whole incident? Oh, that guy was a dick. The guy was a dick. Yeah, I think I agree with that. The guy was a dick. Five minute job to move his car, and instead he spent 45 minutes proving point and whistling to basically intimidate me and indicate that not only did I not matter, but I mattered so little that he wouldn't even acknowledge what I was trying to say. Yeah. He didn't acknowledge Sue either, which I found quite interesting, but he did acknowledge the security people that came along that had nothing to do with it, and um, also the Salisbury City Council man, which I find quite intriguing. Yeah, we moved within like 30 seconds of the council man turning up. Exactly, so why couldn't he have just done that in the first place? Mm -hmm. I don't understand. So uh, you'll see in the video that I've uh, edited and put, uh, put together and here. I'm quite happy to declare on video and for this particular video that I have got a um, number of conditions. I have Ehlers Danlos Syndrome type 3, I have fibromyalgia which gives me neurological problems, I have complex PTSD, adjustment disorder syndrome and I also have anxiety disorder. So to be quite honest, it makes you question the humanity that you have to have faith in when you're disabled and you have to rely on. So Cole, thanks ever so much for moving it eventually but why couldn't you just do it in the first place? I'll be back next Saturday to discuss.
say that as a disabled person, you've just told me to wait because I can't get through because you've got that attitude, I'll more than happily post it on Facebook and show everybody your car and tell them that this is your stall and this is how you treat a disabled person. Excuse me, can you not just go around? I need to go to shoe zone. So no, I can't I just go around. No, I can't because he's part of the car. Oh, so I would love to go around, but I needed to go into shoe zone and he won't let me get in there and he's told me I just need to wait. Because apparently he can't walk a little bit further to move his car a tiny bit backwards so I could get in a doorway. I've got to wait because he's loading up his stuff because apparently he's more of a priority than me being able to go shopping and get public access. That's my problem. I've tried to get through, I can't get through, and he's told me I should just try. And I put the scaffolding there and I can't go under limbo because of my joint problem. So what else am I supposed to try, honey bun? I'm willing to take a suggestion. I want to go to shoe zone. I don't want to go past your store. I want to do some shopping. Just move your car back a bit. That's all I'm asking. I've got a smaller chair in there and I can fix it there. See, I'm not the only one that's struggling. Why won't you just move your car a bit? Well, you could move it for two seconds and carry on loading up. Please move it back a little You have the ability to do it. You're just too lazy to and you're too selfish to. And I'll be more than happy to tell everybody about this and sit next to your stall every Saturday and tell them. And you know what? My voice carries, sweetheart. It does. And I've got this time. <laughs> so I'm more than happy. I'm sure there's a rule that when you There is a legal right that this is a public right way and that's a legal right that I should be able to access whatever I want as a disabled person. What if there was a fire in that shop? How would they be able to get out? Oh, they wouldn't because some guy can't fucking carry his box two millimetres a little bit down the road so I can get in the shop. What if there was a fire, sweetheart? What would you do? Because they wouldn't be able to get out very easily because the scaffolding's in the way and your car is in the way. This isn't a loading zone. It isn't a loading zone. Those are loading zones up there, mate. Use a bloody sack truck. It's not. Where's, the uh, where's your leaflet that says that? Where, where is your permission? No, I'll not. quite happily take the parking permit photograph and I will quite happily see if you've got permission or not. So what do you say about it? I can't get in because he won't let me get into the shop. What do you say about he it, mate? Do you want to say anything for the social media? He said, get along. Hey? No, get alive. <laughs> okay. I have one. I have to look after disabled people. Yeah, exactly. All I want to do is go into the shop, but he's too ignorant and he just thinks I don't matter. To go into the shop, I can't go into the shoes though by going around you because the car's in the way. It's still in the way on the other side, you moron. <laughs> He won't move it. No, he won't. There is no way into that shop on a wheelchair because of where you're parked. is that stress and um, high emotions um, cause quite um, a severe reaction with me because unfortunately um, it means that it increases my stress levels and it increases my anxiety which means that I can't sleep as much and when I am tired I uh, unfortunately I am much more liable for an asthma attack. So it was the triggering of my PTSD symptoms causing me to uh, feel panicked in the situation and because I felt panicked in the situation I went onto a defensive mode and um, that took quite a lot of energy out of me and I was quite sore that day anyway um, and I, um, I unfortunately didn't have the energy available um, but at the time because I was in a uh, I have well because I was in my uh, my amygdala was so um, stimulated. I had adrenaline, so I didn't realise how much I was tiring myself out and the emotion, but all the emotional outpouring afterwards of how I felt about it once my adrenaline had calmed down. So actually, I ended up going home and having a big cry about it. Mm. But yeah, it just it's just a shame that something. It could have taken two minutes, 
sorry for my emotions, but two minutes to do has now caused me at least a week of recovery and pain. And it's just a shame because people don't understand the impact they can have sometimes. So hopefully showing this means that somebody may understand that. And that hopefully will be a good thing because it's not exactly something I would like to share if I could.